Jesus. Jesus. I came to believe. I came to believe. I came to receive. I came to receive. And I will receive. And I will receive. Revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge. Of who I am in Christ. What I have in Christ. What I can and should do in Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Another hand clap for the Lord. Amen. I welcome you, those who are here present, and those who are here on uh, line, Facebook, and otherwise. God bless you and welcome. In the book of Psalms, Psalm number 34. And verse number one, it reads as follows. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast of the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Church, I'm teaching today from the life-changing, life-building, life-blessing message entitled Praise Through Your Problems. Praise Through Your Problems. Can you help me out and say that to somebody? Praise Through Your Problems. All right, the key statement here today is life is not about what happens to you, but how you respond to what happens to you. Amen? Because see, life happens. You know, if you haven't learned it yet, life happens. <laughs> okay? Amen, like the bumper sticker, life happens. And uh, it's not about what happens to you, it's about how you respond to what happens to you. Somebody say, have the right response. Have the right response. Now, if adversity happens to all of us, but what is your attitude as you're going through adversity? What, what, what is your attitude like when you're going through adversity? Uh, that's the question today. What is your attitude like when you're going through. Amen? And uh, the question is, do you praise through your problems? That's the question. That's the question of the day. Do you praise through your problems? In other words, what I want you to understand today is anybody can praise God after the adversity. Anybody can praise God after the problem is solved. But the spiritually mature the faithful praise him through it. They praise him while they're going through Anybody, Listen, anybody can uh, shout and cheer after the game is over. Anybody can shout and cheer once the check comes in. But do you praise God while the check's in the mail? I, I, I'm not talking to anybody here today. In other words, turn to your name and say, praise God through your problems. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. you, you, you got to learn to praise God through your problems. See, praise is not a matter of how you feel. Praise is an act of your will. Yes, it, it, it really is not, it's not, well, I don't feel like praise today. So, God is still worthy. God is still worthy of the praise. The, the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord when? In all time. Not in some time, but at all time. Why? Because he's good all the time. And he's worthy of the praise. Like the psalm said, you deserve it, right? Say, he deserves it. He deserves now, when you learn to praise God at all times, that's supernatural. That's supernatural. Uh, in other words, anybody can praise God. In other words, God is God is like you. He don't want no fair weather friends. I don't know about you, but I don't want any fair weather friends. Do you? I don't want anybody who's just there doing the good time. Do you? Uh, uh, there's a scripture in, the, in Proverbs that says, "A friend loveth at all times." I, I, God is looking for some some tried and true friends. He's not looking for some fair weather praisers. He's not looking for the folks that just praise him just when you got the job you wanted. Just when you got the man you wanted. Just when you got the woman you wanted. Just when everything worked out the way you wanted. God, listen, sometimes God doesn't give you what you want because it's not really what you need. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God has a way of dealing this thing out in the right way, at the right time, and for the right reason. But yet, but, but yet you, you, you think it should be another way. But it shouldn't be the way you think because the Bible says that his ways are not your ways. And then it goes further and says his ways are higher than your ways, higher than heaven is above the earth. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Amen. So praise God in it. Say praise God anyhow. Praise God anyhow. Because when, it, when, it, when things go down, God is in control. 
and you just have to settle your heart on that. Things don't always happen like you think they should. Things don't always happen the way you feel they should. But you do have to remember that God is in control and he's still on the throne. Somebody say, praise him. Praise him. Uh -huh. So that's supernatural. And, and this kind of supernatural praise, you know, it takes faith. It takes faith. It, it, it's not by feelings, it's by faith. Somebody say, by faith. By faith. In Jesus' name. Now, because this is a matter of faith, we know for sure that God rewards it. Because without faith, it's impossible to please Him. And with faith, you please Him every time. And God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Or you can say it like this for the context of this uh, message. God is a rewarder of them that always praise Him. Say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. So today, I want to... Uh, kind of uh, shore up this point that I'm trying to make to you because I always want you to see the word of God. It's not so much about pastor's opinion or what I'm just trying to, 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 to sell you, so to speak. I want you to see it in the word because there's nothing like illumination. Once you listen to me very carefully, once you see a thing, you can walk in a thing. Yes, yes. Oh, I got an amen over there. Yes, I said, yes. once you see a thing, you can walk in a thing. Yes. Somebody say, I can't walk, I can't walk. Where, I see. where I don't see. You know, you, you ever try to walk in the dark? Hard to walk in the dark. You might stumble over something. Amen? amen. And you know, if, it, if, it, if, if the lights go off, whatever, what is the first thing you do? You get a little flashlight or flashlights on your cell phone now, right? Yeah. But, but you don't just start trying to walk because you, you need somebody say, I need some light. And that's the same way it is in life. You need light. You need a, It's called illumination. You need illumination of the will of God. And once that illumination happens, you can walk in it. It's nothing like it. Once you really get it, somebody say, I really want to get it today. Now say, I'm going to get it today. I declare in the name of Jesus that this church is going to get this today. And we're going to be a uh, real Praisers. We're going to be, as, as, as Joel Osteen said, we're going to be pit praisers. You know what a pit praiser is? A pit praiser is somebody who can praise him even when you're in the pits. Amen. See, anybody can praise him on the mountaintop. But God is looking for some pit praisers. Are you hearing me? He's looking for some folk that can pay, praise him when they're down. When it looks like the, 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 you're, you look like you're not going to win the game and the time is running out on the clock. It looks like there's no, and nobody's coming. The cavalry ain't coming. Nobody's coming. The doctors don't know what to say. The, you know, the, the, the police can't help you and, and mama can't help you and everything else. But are you still going to praise God? Say, yes, I'm a pit praiser. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Say, I'm a pit praiser. So I want to give you three examples today that will help you get some illumination in this area. The first example is from uh, a brother named David. David. Now, I, I'm not going to call him King David right now because when we pick up the story, he's not the king yet. See, uh, on your way uh, to the palace, you got to go through some pits. Amen? And David had some pits on his way to the palace. Say, amen. amen. Joseph wasn't the only one. David had some pits he had to go through too. And so here we're picking this thing up, and it's in our foundational text. In Psalm 34, uh, uh, it, it, it shows that that David is writing this psalm and he's saying, I bless the Lord. But if you study it out, it's during a time of his life where he's running for his life. Saul is trying to kill him. He already has thrown a spear at him. He's already been chasing him. He's got a whole army of guys and he's trying to chase this man, David. Uh, because he's jealous, he's insecure. Anybody know about folk attacking you because they're jealous and insecure? Give me a little wave off it if you understand what I'm talking about. Amen, amen. So, so this is what I'm saying. Saul is the king. And by the way, sometimes you got folk coming against you and they got some power. No, might be your supervisor. And they got power, they got position. Somebody say, but God. But God. <laughs> so here he is, and David is running from Saul. And watch this, church. David praised God before God solved his problem. Wait a minute now. I said, David praised God. What's the key word there? Before, before God solved his problem. And then what? Watch this. And God eventually solved his problem. Because he praised God, before God solved his problem, God eventually did what? 
solved his problem. I believe and declare that today we're going to have some people who are going to be so uh, illuminated in their mind, so convicted in their heart, that they're going to say, I'm going to praise God before he solves my problem. Amen. Say amen. amen. Say, and then he's going to solve my problem. Amen. 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 Look at it. Psalm 34 and 1. He said, I will bless the Lord at all, all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. What was he doing? He was running from the devil. He was running from Saul, but he said, I'm still going to praise God. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. His correct attitude in adversity was not only the key to victory, but it was contagious and it caused others to experience victory in Christ. Did you see that? In other words, he not only praised God, before his deliverance. But that kind of supernatural praise, that kind of faithful praise caused everybody around him to also catch on. That's why he can say, oh, magnify the Lord, what? Amen. With me and let us exalt his name together. Church, when you learn to praise God before the manifestation, when you learn to praise God before the healing manifest. When you learn to praise God before the debt is resolved. When you learn to praise God before the employee conflict is resolved. When you learn to praise God before your ship comes in. That thing is contagious and other people around you will learn to start praising God too before the fact. Give God some praise if you understand what I'm talking about. Hey, glory to God. Well, well, that was a good Old Testament example because David said let us exalt the Lord together and the mighty men who were with him they began to praise God with him and guess what happened after that eventually watch this now eventually David becomes king God gives him to become the next king of Israel but you know how David became the king watch this David praised God while Saul was chasing him but notice what he did not do he did not attack Saul. Mm. He didn't fight Saul. Mm. In fact, there was a time where uh, in, in, in the cave of Adullam, Saul was down there, and David saw he was there, and, and he could have killed Saul because Saul was asleep. All his men were asleep. And David went down there, and the Lord said, Touch not my anointing. Do my prophet no harm. He told him, Don't, don't do it. But to let Saul know, that he was down there, he 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 cut a piece of his cloth and took some of his uh, took one of his uh, uh, pieces of, of armor and he he left. And then when Saul woke up, he called down there and he said, Saul, you need to leave me alone. He says, Oh no, I'm not gonna leave you alone. He said, Yeah, you should. He said, Because I was down there and I could have killed you. I was right there and I could have killed you. You need to back back. You need to you need to, you know to back up, brother. And then he showed him his spear and said, see? And Saul looked up and, 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 and realized that he could have done that. You don't realize that even after that, Saul didn't back up and that it had to happen one more time. But then guess what happened? Guess what happened? David did not take the matter into his own hands. You know how Saul ended up dying? Saul ended up going to war. And uh, basically, he ended up falling on they, that term, fall on your own sword. He ended up realizing that the enemy was going to kill him, and then he basically kind of committed suicide. He fell on his own sword. In other words, if you will praise God through your problems, God will take care of your problem. God will take care of that person who's giving you a hard time. God will take care of that family member who's always hated on you. God will take care of that person at the job who's always trying to get you in trouble. God will take care of it. You just got to praise him through your problems. Give God some praise. Give him some praise. Amen. Now, example number two. We're going to go to the New Testament. And now we're turning from a man named David to a man named Paul. A man named Paul. The Apostle Paul. Amen. He was, church, he was unjustly beaten and jailed in a place called Philippi. Now, here was this man. He's out witnessing. It's his first time into the European continent. He's in northern Greece. And he's in a region called Macedonia, a city called Philippi. And he's preaching the gospel. And these people are mad because he cast this devil out of this fortune-telling woman. And because he did that, they couldn't, her handlers, her backers, 
couldn't get any more money from her or through her. And so they were mad about that. So they went to the local authorities and they had uh, Paul beaten and arrested. Somebody say beaten and arrested. Oh yeah, and this was a tough situation, not only because he's hurting, not only because he's in prison, but you know there's something interesting about this story, which you find in Acts chapter 16, and that is that before Paul went to this town called Philippi, he knew he was supposed to go there, because he had a vision from the Lord. There was a man in this vision in Macedonia who said, come over here and help us. But when he went out there to help the people, he, he had not met this man yet. He didn't know who the man was or whatever. And he ends up beaten and arrested. How many times are you uh, doing good, you go into church, you're praying, you're reading your word, and somehow you end up getting beaten and arrested? In other words, something bad happens to you, make you want to stop praising God. Make you want to say, well, God, wait a minute now. I thought that if I praised you, you'd be looking out for me. You wouldn't allow something like this to happen to me. Be careful. Because God is always worthy to be praised. Yes. And nothing happens to you without God's permission. Because you are covered by the blood. Don't ever forget that even though it might not look right, might not seem right, might not feel right, God has got you right where he wants you to be. Just praise him through your problems. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to teach you about this. Wait a minute, God. You told me to go over there and to help these people out. And I go on over there, and I get beaten, and I get arrested, and now I'm in jail. Here I am, I'm in trouble. And I thought I was being a good Christian and doing what you want me to do, and now I'm the one in trouble. What is going to be your response to that kind of situation? And what did Paul do? He kept on what? Praising God. The Bible says, uh, round about midnight, he started singing praise songs to the Lord. Now this is the same Paul who, who, who could write the following text. Look at this. Look at Ephesians with me. Paul praised God before God solved his problem and God eventually solved his problem. This is the same Paul who wrote this. Ephesians chapter 5. Look what he says. He says, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now see, that's what I was just trying to tell you about. When you're going through life, Things don't always turn out like you think. But don't look at it in the natural. Just stay in the spirit and say, 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 God is at work. Say he's working behind the scenes. Say my life is in his hands. I'm going to keep praising him. I hope you get this. Watch this. He said, verse 18. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit. There it is. When you're going through the pits of life, a lot of people, they say, man, this is sure to piss. Give me a drink. Man, this is sure tough. Pass the liquor. That's not the answer. No, it's not. That's not the answer. All that's going to do is, is, is get you more depressed or get you fired up and angry, and then you're going to be fighting with somebody. Amen? That's not, somebody say, that's not the answer. That's not the answer. Somebody else say, Pastor's telling the real truth now. All right, now watch this. He said, instead of doing that, verse 19, speak to one another in what? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You need to be there doing that in the pits. You need to be talking about praise him, praise him, praise him in the morning, praise him in the new day, praise him. Come on, Baptist. Praise him. Y'all know it. Praise him till the sun goes down. See, see, see you. That's when you really need to get your praise on. You need to give the devil a black eye and you need to just walk around singing a praise song. Amen. Even if, you, even if you're young and you don't know the old praise song, then, then walk around talking about, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Whatever you do. Whatever your praise song is, get your praise. Turn your name and get your praise on. Get your praise on. Now listen, he says, speak it to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing. And making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Now you know that don't make no sense when you're going through. But that's the praise. Hallelujah. That's the praise. Praise does three things. It proclaims the goodness of God. It pleases God. 
And then the last one is, it provokes the hand of God. In other words, when you can praise God in the pit, God looks at that and says, honey, that's the now that's the that's a praise right there. That's a showed up praise right there. That provokes me to do something on their behalf. You ever been, you ever uh, had your children or your grandchildren, they just say something or do something that just blesses your heart so much and just make you want, oh, I just want to bless that little child. I just want to do something for them. I'm gonna go to the store and get them something. Just the way they looked and the way they said what they said, Papa, I love you. Oh Lord, just let me oh, go get something for them. Let me do something for Is anybody hear me today? I'm trying to tell you that when God, when God looks down and he sees you going through a pit experience and you're going to sit up there and talk about, I love, I love you, Lord. And you're going to praise him like that. That's going to move the hand of God. You better get ready because something good is getting ready to happen. Come on, church. Verse 20 says, giving thanks uh, sometimes. Giving thanks most of the time. Oh, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, Paul can write that because he'd been in some pits. Paul can write that because he knew the power of praise in the pit. If you in the pits, don't get pitiful. You get your praise on. That's when you really start. Oh God, oh devil, oh no devil, oh no devil. I'm in the emergency room, devil, but I'm sorry. But you ain't getting no. You not. You not getting the glory out of this. Cause I know. First of all, I know two things. I know God is always good, and I know this problem is not gonna be always. Come on, church. I know God is always good, and I know this too shall pass. My mama taught me a long time ago. She said, this too shall pass. And honey, if you know that this too shall pass, you need to praise God, not for what's happening right now, but you need to praise God that then the trouble don't last all the way. And we did they endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You need to praise God for the morning. Come on, sir. Praise God for the morning. Praise God that this is not going to, I don't know what I'm talking about today. I don't know what I'm talking today, but you're in a pit right now. But I'm here to tell you, honey, I stopped by to let you know that the morning is coming. Sunlight is coming after midnight, and you just better praise God right now. And that's going to make it come a little faster. Give it praise. You better give it praise. You better give it praise. That usher in the sunshine. Give it praise. Listen, listen, listen. Again, it's not natural, it's supernatural. It takes a spiritually mature person to do this. To see and praise the goodness of God in all situations. Now that takes a person of faith. That means you're looking in the spirit. You're not looking at your circumstances. You're looking at the character of God. You're looking at the fact that God is always good. It's not a catchphrase. You need to understand that no matter what you're, well, but right now things are so tight. My finances are so tight right now. You know, I just, you know, I can't even afford to pay attention. That's a whole one. Anyway, but, 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 but my point is you got to praise God no matter what. Because he said he's Jehovah Jireh. Do you know what that really means? It doesn't just mean he's the God who provides. It means he's the God who sees the end from the beginning. Watch this. And before you know you have a need, he's already provided for the need you don't even know you have. The Lord knows, and He's already put a ram in the bush. When you finally figure out you have a need, the need is already met before you knew you had it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That, and that's the full vagina. The God who sees ahead and has already provided for you. Jehovah Jireh has already provided for you, even though you didn't know you had a need that needed to be provided for. Are you hearing me today, church? Amen. Listen, listen. His correct attitude in adversity was not only the key to victory, but again, like with David, it was contagious. And it caused others to experience victory in Christ. You know, uh, these last couple of weeks, my wife was going through hell. Uh, three times in emergency room within a week. And not only three times within a week, two Saturday nights in a row. Never happened to me in my whole life. 
two, I mean, I'm a preacher. I need Saturday night. I'm in, I'm asleep by, you know, at least 10 o'clock, right? And here we are in emergency and doctors are clueless and all these things going on. We finally get through one Saturday like that. And I remember saying to myself, Lord Jesus, I don't ever want that to happen again. I mean, it's just, you know, being in the emergency for like 10 hours and then finally getting out of there 12, 1 o'clock at night, trying to get some sleep, trying to get in the next day, be prepared to give you messages and all this stuff. And then a week later, same thing happened. And, 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 and God was just showing me. He said, just keep praising me. Just keep, he said, Jesus said, for the joy that is set before me, I endured the cross and despise the shame. In other words, you need to see beyond your circumstances. You need to praise because you have a vision beyond your circumstances. On the other side of your circumstances, there is victory. You can't, listen, in life, you can't pray. Listen, I'm going to help somebody today. In life, you can't always pray away everything. I'm telling you something now. Sometimes God, sometimes, his will is that you pray and the problem goes away. But other times his will is not for you to go around it or not have to deal with it, but for you to go through it. All right, is anybody hearing me today? Sometimes the Lord, he's he, he can't grow us up unless we, we can't get to unless we go through. There's some things you just got to go through. And while you're going through them, if you don't learn how to go through it, I think my wife said it earlier today, if you don't learn how to go through, all you're going to end up doing is going back through again. Yeah. If you don't learn how to start praising God when things are going tough, then guess what? Things will continue to do like that until you learn the lesson. So you might as well get it right, and you get it right, and you'll understand that's where the power's going to come. Keep praising God. Amen. I praise the Lord. And even though my wife was sick, she was catching it in the spirit. She couldn't, you know, when you're sick, you need an advocate. You need somebody who's operating on your behalf. Not only with the, with the doctors, you need an advocate. You need an intercessor. You need an advocate uh, for you in that way. So uh, she was going through, and I was going through with her. You know, she's in the emergency room, and she got the, and I'm running to the doctor, and I'm telling them she needs more blankets, and she needs a warm blanket. And all while she got the warm blankets, I'm in there shivering. I'm in this shivering. Ten hours. I'm in this shivering. I'm in there, but I had my word with me, and I'm singing praises to the Lord. And I'm thanking him. I say, Lord, I know who you are. I know you're faithful. I know you're going to answer us. I know you're going to get us through this. And I'm praising you right now. Anybody can praise you after the fact, but I'm praising you during the fact. Give God some praise today. Oh, but I want to say the best example for last. We see David do it. We saw the Apostle Paul do it, but we know who the greatest example is, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus Christ, and in case you didn't know it, Jesus prays through his problems. I don't know if you can realize this, but I said Jesus prays through his problems. If I don't show it to you in the Bible, you don't have to believe it, but I'm going to say it again. Jesus, did he, what did he do? He prays through his problems. Well, what kind of problems did he have, Pastor? Well, Jesus praised God before God solved his problem, and God eventually solved his problem. Jesus praised God before God solved his problem, and God eventually solved his problem. Well, what was his problem? His problem was he had to go to the cross. Amen? Amen. Amen. His problem was that he was betrayed by his friend, mm -hmm. by the man that he had blessed and, 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 and discipled and showed love to, and he was betrayed by his friend, and he had to go to the cross and suffer, bleed, and die for our sins. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Now, you know, anybody could, could have a pity party. If anybody could have felt in the pit uh, during that time, it would have been Jesus. Amen? amen? If anybody could have felt in the pit, it would have been Jesus. And watch this, because Jesus knew what was getting ready to happen. We just celebrated communion today, right? right. Now, remember, when we celebrate communion... It's a throwback to what? To Passover. The Passover meal. On that night, Jesus was having a Passover meal. And what did he say? He said, tonight, the Son of Man shall be what? Betrayed. And what did the people say? 
Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Everybody was like, oh, Lord. I hope it, it, well, that shows you something right there. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Did nobody know if it was them or not? They, they, everybody was like, oh, Lord, please don't let it be me. Because you don't know what you will do until certain circumstances happen. So they were all saying, is it I? And Jesus said, no. He said, the one that dips his sock in the dish is the one who should do it. And then he handed the dish to Judas, indicating that this was going to be him. And even then, the disciples didn't really understand what he was talking about. Because Judas got up, the Bible says, and Satan then entered into his heart. And Judas got up and ran up out of there. And, and, and the Bible says the rest of the disciples looked to each other and said, they tried to surmise what happened. They said, well, maybe he went to the grocery store. <laughs> That's what they said. Maybe he went to go get some more groceries. They didn't even put two and two together. Jesus just said, the man who dipped his bread in, the, in my dish, that's the one who's going to betray me. And all of a sudden, Judas does a bathroom chip just like that. And they're like, they, 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 where did Judas go? I don't know, man. I think he went to go get some more, you know, stole some stuff. What's my point? They didn't know what was getting ready to happen, but who did? Jesus did. He knew that Judas was about now to fulfill prophecy. And for 30 pieces of silver, you know why 30 pieces of silver is significant? That's the wage of a slave. That's a slave's wage. For, for the wage of a slave, he is going to sell Jesus out. In other words, Jesus became uh, a sacrifice and a slave so that we could be free. Jesus was bought for the price of a slave so that you could be free. Are you hearing me? So here's Jesus. He knows what's getting ready to happen. The crowds are going to be gone. The Hosanna is going to be gone. The miracles and all the, all the beauty of ministry is going to be gone. And he's going to have to deal with this alone. And he knows that he knows that all the disciples are going to be gone because the Bible has already prophesied this and said if you smite the shepherd, the sheep will what? Scatter. Now if anybody could have been in the pit, it would have been Jesus right there. If anybody could have withheld their praise, it should have been Jesus right there. Let's pick it up and let's see what happens in Matthew. Matthew chapter 26. We pick it on up at that night. The night before the crucifixion. Verse Matthew 26, 27. It says, then he took the cup. That's Jesus. This is the Passover meal, right? And gave thanks. See, he's giving thanks, right? He's praising God. He gave thanks, right? And gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink of it new with you in my Father's kingdom. He knew he was getting ready to die. You know you're getting ready to die. Is that a time to praise? But watch what happens. Verse 30 is the operative verse. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives where Judas was going to bring the soldiers to betray him. In other words, right after supper, Jesus summoned him. If you study that out, you'll find out that's the Hallel. It means the, the, the praise psalms from like Psalm 13 to Psalm 118. He entered into some of the praise songs that he knew from the Old Testament. Why? Because... You have to learn to praise God through your problems. Give God some praise. Amen. Amen. That's what he's going to do. Amen. David said it. Paul said it. Jesus said it. David did it. Paul did it. Jesus did it. And we have to do it. And when we learn to praise God through our problems, God is going to solve our problem. We won't have to worry about it. Jesus praised him. And yes, he went through. But he went through to get to. And after he died, God said, Therefore, I have exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Of things in heaven, of things in the earth, and things underneath the earth. Church, if you will praise God in the pit. He will raise you into the palace. Come on, church. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Learn to praise Him at all times. And 
my time is up, and I thank you for yours. Amen. Give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Saints are praying and never want to take it for granted that everybody in the sound of my voice uh, knows the Lord Jesus Christ personally, that he's the Lord of their life. <coughs> so now I want to give you an opportunity to invite him into your heart. Would you please uh, repeat after me, all of us, so that we can encourage somebody who might not know the Lord. Please repeat with me and open up your heart, believe in these words, and you shall be saved. Those of you already saved, then you're just reaffirming your salvation. Let us pray. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. Please come into my heart. Please come into my heart. And save me. And save me. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you died for my sins. And God resurrected you from the dead. And God resurrected you from to the prove dead. To prove that you are Lord and Savior. That you are Lord and Savior. And I am saved. I am saved. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you pray in that simple prayer, we believe that you got born again, saved, regenerated in the Spirit, and now all you have to do is get into a good Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church and learn, as we teach here at Truth and Love, learn more about faith, hope, and love according to the Word of God. God bless you. Don't forget, uh, we're Truth to Love Christian Church. On the screen, you can see where we're located if you want to contact us. Or if you want to come by and visit us personally, we'd be more than happy to see you. Our doors are open. Our hearts are open to you. God bless you. Keep on listening to the broadcast. If God leads you to sow into us, sow right on in. And we give you, give God praise and we give you thanks for doing so. Amen. Let's give God praise again. So broadcast. Okay.